What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Elliot Delp and today we are going to be talking about how to get into hunting for beginners. Uh, felt, felt inspired. We're out here right now at one of our hunting spots and I thought it'd be something good to talk about. So uh, let's get right into this video. So, like I said before the intro rolled, we're going to be talking about the best way to get into hunting for beginners. And I've had people ask me this question um, on some of my hunting videos. Like, I know recently it was on the, um, the, or the most recent time somebody asked me was on the uh, top three favorite rifles for hunting. Or my top three favorite hunting rifles. Uh, and we're out here right now, we're in one of our hunting spots actually and we felt inspired to go ahead and talk about this so we want to get into a little bit of everything and i'll be asking hunter here kind of what his opinions are on some things uh i want to talk about everything so from how to start to finding land to what kind of clothes you want to get into how to get into it for the best amount of money possible um some of the things you need to start out by doing some of the uh I guess ideal rifle calibers for, for beginners and maybe some brands that uh, people can look into that are really good brands and then w what to do after you, you kill something. Uh, I won't get too much into that because there's a million different things to do after you actually kill something. Mosquitoes are out today. Uh, but let's just start out from the beginning. So you figure out you want to go hunting. Well the first thing you want to do is you need to find land, right? And what do you feel like the best way to do that is? I think, personally, I think that if you don't have any connections to any hunting land, public land is the best way to go, yeah. or know somebody that hunts public land mm -hmm. and go with them. And I, I recommend finding a hunting partner that has some experience. Uh, they'll they'll be able to help you a lot, a lot better than any video can ever help you. Mm -hmm. But I feel like finding public land and then trying to find public land that doesn't look like it's been just overly obnoxiously used. And I don't know how abundant that is. Public land is pretty abundant around where we're yeah. at. So, I, f I feel like the, the best way to start is public land and then finding a buddy. Um, so, once you've found your public land, how do you know where the deer are at? Well, you need to go and pick up some trail cameras and start placing them, I would say, later in the year probably like august mm -hmm. uh well you could start earlier you can start whenever you want but yeah and and just checking them regularly trying to find deer paths um looking for where deer have been moving and setting up your trail cameras there and starting to get a good idea of where you want to set up and when you find this public land and you start looking for all this stuff you need to spend some time there you need to get familiar with it get a good idea of how you want to be hunting you want to be looking for good shooting lanes you don't want to just go in the middle of the thickest woods humanly possible you know you need to you need to find a good place to hunt and you got to spend some time there you know you got to walk around and look for, uh, sign. Look for sign get familiar with it really yeah, there's uh, probably a million different videos you can watch on like the best way to scout yeah or, like how to find where the deer are yeah there's there's tons of videos out there uh, but this is not one of them this is just kind of your how-to or the the intro for beginners. Okay. So once you've once you found the land, you found um, where the deer are at. You need to find how you're going to be hunting. So you can either just sit down underneath a tree. I recommend getting a, just a little blind, especially if it's like mm -hmm. one of the first things. You, like if this is your first time hunting, because tree tree stands can be a lot, right? It can be a lot to deal with. And I don't know how tree stands work on public land. I guess maybe a climber stand. But yeah, climber stands are expensive, mm -hmm. and you, well, you have to know how to use one. But yeah, well, I'm I'm sure you could learn pretty easily. You could learn how to use a climber but stand. They are expensive, but I really recommend a blind. What was the blind we just bought? That was that's probably my recommendation uh, on a blind. You can link it below. It's oh. it's uh, the summit. It's a three person summit. Yeah, it's a summit blind. I really like that blind. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been using the bull blinds, the ones you can see through. And they're really nice, but 
but I think the Summit's superior. Right. I mean, you can't see through the Summit like you can see through the Bull. But all the windows open. But all the windows open, and they're, and they're not they're, zip either. And no, then they just like move. I need to do a video on that Summit blind. Mm -hmm. But the Summit blind's really good. So once you've found your blind or found your tree stand, however you're doing, you need to get it set up. Yeah, and don't let that be a limitation. You can. I've hunted many a time sitting on the ground. Yeah, you don't like need. you don't need a blind, but it's it's convenient. Mm -hmm. All right. So after you do that, then you need to find some clothes. Right, and you can probably hit all of these in one fell swoop. You can get your clothes, your gun, and your ammo all at the exact same place without too much thought, really. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just getting into it, I recommend Walmart. You know, or Roll King. I mean, both yeah. of, both of those are spot on. Um, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying the most expensive thing possible, and I wouldn't mm -hmm. even say you really need camo or anything. No. If you're, especially if you're hunting out of a blind. I just make sure to dress warm and appropriately. I've hunted in blue jeans before. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just don't want to be like, you don't want to make yourself obviously known. Um, and then I've also heard people say, well, you really need to stay away from like brown colors because you look like the butt of a deer when you're walking through the woods. Huh. You ever heard that? No. I've, like, you know how the solid brown car hearts look? Mm -hmm. I bet that, I, I I bet that, that looks like a deer. I've I never really. That like really thought thought hard about it mm -hmm. but you need to go to walmart and you need to get you some camo camo pants camo shirt camo jacket and maybe some bibs depending on how cold you are and that won't run you that much what do you think it's like 150 bucks if you got everything yeah and then there's also like half the time now i still put on sweatpants or something or you know you could put on a pair of jeans or a pair of old thermals or leggings you had laying around yeah under, like you don't need the well, hunting base no, 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 layer, the, the hunting pants, the, the hunting pants that go over the hunting. I pants recommend that, the base layer. The base layer is like five bucks. Well, that's just a normal base. It's not a hunting base oh, layer. I'm well, talking yeah. like an Under Armour specific hunting. Oh no, no, Golly, like, that stuff's crazy expensive. You can like get stuff by you've, that. Stuff you've had when you went somewhere cold, you can wear it. But I would say it, it's not that important. But like you say, it, go go get some like a jacket and a pair of pants or something. Yeah, you could, you could wear on the outside. Yeah, I'd recommend that. I wouldn't. You don't need to have all the special hunting stuff, all the crazy, insane gear, and a nice pair of boots. Yeah. Especially if you're doing a lot of walking on this public land. Uh, Which you probably will be on public land. Yeah, you probably will be walking a lot. So yeah. maybe a, a nice pair of boots. Uh, my hands and feet get really cold, so I'd, I'd prefer a nicer pair of boots over layers. And then some of the accessories while you're in the hunting section, Sinaway. You want to get some scent away uh, and hand warmers. Mm -hmm. Unless it's hot wherever you are. Yeah, unless you're hot. And I guess we're really tailoring this to deer hunting. Mm -hmm. uh, but it pretty much worked for about it. Well, pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the most part. Uh, so after you've got all that, you've pretty much got everything you need to get to the stand and be in the stand. Now you got to talk about like what you want to kill your deer with or whatever you're shooting with. I recommend, like if you're just starting out, you can go... I think there's three calibers that are just like spot on. 243, 270, 308. I don't think you can go wrong with any of those three or 30 out six. They're super common. Mm -hmm. Like Creedmoor's expensive. Um, I don't know, some of the weirder rounds. But like those, I think those four are like spot on right. easiest and most simple to get into. Mm -hmm. And bolt gun, 300 bucks. You can buy a Walmart Octic. I mean, Right here. This is not a three hundred dollar gun. This is one of our AR pistols in six five Grindel, but it has a Simmons optic on it. I mean, this that, that optic's what like fifty bucks, yeah, sixty not bucks. Not very expensive. Still a very good optic. Uh, it'll get the job done, and you don't have to worry about it. So you you don't you can get out of there for three hundred three fifty on a rifle. Some rifles even come with optics. Jared's Savage Axis came with an optic. Mm -hmm. So you don't really have to go over the top on a gun. And I know $300 on a gun is pretty high up there. Right. Well, I mean, it's not high up there, but a lot of people would consider it expensive. I would consider it expensive. I can't go out and buy a $300 gun whenever I want, you know. Right. Uh, but really stick within those, especially if you're starting out, a few categories of 243, 270, 308 and 30 out 6. Comment down below if you think there's a better one out there or if you think uh, I'm missing something. But I really those. You could also check out 
local pawn shop or something. Oh, true. You could do a local you pawn could get, shop. You could get a good deal on a gun or Like an old military. Bow. Well, true. Your a bow. bow. The, you've killed a deer with a $20 bow before. And I've killed a deer a with a $20 shop. bow with, from a pawn shop. And that, I didn't even make a video on it. That was before I started making videos. I actually went, right, did and that. And that, <laughs> was you, that was you kind of filling in the story you're telling. Yeah. Like, I, mean, you, I knew nothing about a bow. Like, you didn't bow hunt at all, really, before no. that. You went to the pawn shop, bought a twenty dollar bow, came and, with and, the arrows and everything. Mm -hmm. Like and, it was and, the full deal. And now deal. you've progressed to a much nicer bow and you know. like legitimate stuff. But I mean, you you kind of you start work somewhere. your way yeah. into it. Uh, and so, like, so don't, don't shy away from military old military rifles. Mm -hmm. They might not look as nice and as fancy as the Walmart, like I say Walmart rifles, but like the Savage Axis and stuff. But like old military rifles are real good. Um, like just older older guns in general work just fine. They don't have to be a synthetic stock. They don't have to be like a detachable mag. I mean, you can do top load. Like all kinds of stuff. You can you can get around spending three hundred dollars on a gun. Maybe not right now in this political climate or anything, but for the most part, once everything right. settles down, you could do it very cheap uh, and very inexpensive. You can you can get it done. And then. All you have to do is sight it in, make sure you're comfortable shooting it and working with it, and then go out and hunt. Make sure you're hunting within your seasons. Um, if you are hunting public land, you will have to have a hunting license. And some, some places that requires a class you have to take beforehand. So I'd recommend making sure you're doing everything legally correct. And not that you don't have to be careful on your own land, but you have to be a lot more careful on public land. Yeah, because you might be hunting with other hunters. Right, I've, I've heard stories before where somebody's hunting on public land, and this is why most people don't like it. It's somebody hunting on public land, and they're sitting there, they got there 30 minutes before daylight, and all of a sudden it's five <laughs> minutes after daylight, and somebody walks oh, 20 yeah. yards in front of them and sits down. Oh, that'd they be, didn't see them. That'd be horrible. Oh, I almost forgot. Orange. You need to have orange, especially if you're deer hunting. Mm -hmm. Deer and uh, rifle. Yeah, deer and rifle. And it's it, actually a legal amount that's required. Yeah, it's like one, one it's cubic a, square, it's square. A, I don't so know. many inches or feet it, or something. Yeah, it's something. Uh, always recommend orange hat. Mm -hmm. Even in muzzleloader, orange hat, all the time. I wouldn't. Re I don't think it's that important though. Bow, bow doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I, no. Um, but yeah. So you need to make sure you're up on all your legal legal rules and stuff. Here in Virginia, you don't have to have a hunting license to hunt your own private land. So if you have your own land and you're looking to get into hunting, you really have yourself set up uh, pretty good. So so you, you do all this stuff and you kill a deer. What do you do with it next? You gotta... That's a million gotta, dollar question. <laughs> gotta gut it. You gotta gut it. So this is where your buddy really Field comes... Dressing. Yeah, this is where your buddy really comes into, like, having a good hunting partner or somebody that started hunting really comes into, like, being useful. Because um, it can be very intimidating to field dress a deer. Um, and it can, it can be difficult sometimes. It can be a lot of work. You also have the option to take it somewhere. And, and most most people expect most you to places, field dress it though. Ex expect you to at least field dress it and they'll do everything else but i i'm sure if you just started you could take it somewhere they would just charge you extra but or then that's it's it's not sketchy but if it's a hot day you need to get it there asap yeah like you field dress a deer because you don't want the insides to ruin the meat yeah so it if you if you are what what they could do is if they took it somewhere, have them help them through it, mm -hmm. help them through the field dress at least. Um, that'd probably be the best way to do it. Or watch a video on YouTube, but that still That's, doesn't do everything. No, like a, a video. There's all sorts of good videos that'll show you everything you need to know. But I mean, it's like you can watch a video on how to drive a stick shift all day, but until you get in the car and somebody helps you through it, you it, practice it until it's, you're trying to split bones. And yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's it's something you. I mean. It's something you just got to get used to. It's not a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like, you shouldn't be intimidated to the point where you don't go. Uh, but it is something you need to learn how to do, and it can be very intimidating. Um, and, but once you've, once you've field dressed it, you're pretty much in the clear. Uh, you can take it somewhere. For the most part, we take, uh, we take ours just because we're lazy. We'll, we'll pull the back straps out of it. And then we'll take it all to get grinded 
to our butcher and it's all just turned into hamburger. Um, I mean, I don't have anything to do that with. No, I sometimes we'll take it to Hunter's dad or my father-in-law's, and, and we they, can do they it have there. Grinders and everything they can they but, do their, all their own. But I mean, meat shop's not very expensive. I take, like I said, sometimes we take ours and we get it turned into burger. And if you take a whole deer there, we never take the tenderloin because the tenderloin's the best. But you take a whole deer there, both legs or all four legs, and then. You take all four legs. I'm sorry, it sounded like somebody's come up the driveway. Take all four legs there, and uh, it was like 50 bucks mm -hmm. to get it all turned into burger. So it's it's pretty decent. And there's a, there's a thousand things you can do after yeah. after you field dress it. There's a million videos on how to handle when, cook when, and cure. When you're getting in, don't get into deer hunting or probably any hunting honestly, and expect to do it to save money, because you won't. Mm, you can. I mean, you can. But after you get the initial investment. If you just like, if you just bare bones it the whole time, you could probably. But, but realistically. But realistically, you start liking it and you start wanting to get right. better stuff. Like, eventually, you want a four wheeler for but, no apparent reason. But if your mindset is, I want to go hunt because I don't want to pay for burger anymore, or I don't want to pay somebody for venison, you're still going to be paying for it. Yeah. So and don't get into it for that reason. You can't sell venison, by the way. You can't pay for it legally. They don't sell it in stores. Venison, deer meat, no. Certain places don't sell it. Oh, you could buy like bougie, like a whole yeah, or something. You probably. could probably buy bougie. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, don't get into it and thinking you're going to be saving a ton of money because it's a lot of work. Uh, it, now, if you want to hunt for the sport of it and because you like deer, that's nice. If you want to hunt because you want to get away from buying food at a grocery store, that that'd be acceptable there's all i mean there's a bunch of reasons for you just want to be more in touch with nature yeah i mean, I mean it's nice out here mm -hmm. so i think that about does it for the video i think that was our best run on talking about how to get into hunting for beginners um we do stuff on the channel all the time hunting related if you made it this far go check out uh what what's your your video just hit over 100k or has oh it was my top hunting one my top three hunting rifles. Mm -hmm. but yeah, go check that out. That, that if you're watching this, that'd be a good one to watch too. That would be a good one because they're all they're they're all of them are budget. Mm -hmm. um, so I do talk about the six five Creedmoor in that one because one of my hunting rifles is a Creedmoor, uh, and it's a nice rifle. So go check out that video. But I think that about does it. I appreciate every single one of y'all for watching. As always, take someone outdoors, and we will see y'all next time.